Hello fellow humans. My name is Poppy and I believe love has no gender. I also believe everybody deserves equal rights, but unfortunately some people feel threatened by this concept. And that's why, at times, the world can feel like a pretty dark place. But for those of us who are lucky enough to be able to do so, it can be crucial and even productive to take a little mental break from all the bad stuff that surrounds us daily. I think Karama Brown says it best. Where, like, you know, everyone is worried about a pandemic and also is supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. I think what is beautiful is that people get to take a break and it kind of just recharges you and says, you know what? I want to go out there and protest. I want to do better for tomorrow. Let me recharge, break down, and come back. And I think that's really a beautiful part of our show. So while I would never want to take away from the real upsetting news that's out there, I hope that this video can act as a little distraction, at least for as long as it plays and hopefully be a reminder of all the small victories we've had recently. However insignificant all these minor successes may feel individually, I do believe that, looking at them together, we can see a slight shift in global attitudes towards human rights movements. And I know we still have miles to go before everyone's treated with the same respect and given the same opportunities, but there is hope out there and I think these little stories prove that. And in the LGBTQAI plus community specifically, we owe a lot of this progress to the trans women of colour who led the Stonewall riots in June of 1969. Their incredible demonstrations of strength and resilience made it possible for queer people to host the first Pride Parade the following year. And now, five decades on, we continue to honour their struggle and demand equality through worldwide demonstrations and celebrations of Pride spanning the entirety of this month. And that's why, in the spirit of Pride, I wanted to share some of the best LGBTQAI plus news that 2020 has given us so far. So, I've picked out some of my favourite stories relating to our community from all over the world. Now, without further ado, let's kick things off with one of the biggest headlines of the year so far, Costa Rica legalising same-sex marriage. Yes, on the 26th of May, Costa Rica became the first Central American country to not only legally recognise, but also perform same-sex marriages. When President Carlos Alvarado Quesada made his announcement on Twitter, he said, Today we celebrate liberty, equality, and our democratic institutions. May empathy and love be the compass that guide us forward and allow us to move forward and build a country that has room for everyone. It was an emotional time for all, and couples celebrated the decision by hosting small, safely distanced weddings the same night. 1. Truly heartwarming stuff. If you'd like to read up on the process that led to this ruling, or find out more about any of the stories I'll be discussing here today, all the news links will be in the description below. Now I want to take you back to the mayoral elections of a small commune on the French border with Belgium, known as Tiloir le Marchand. On the 23rd of May, the near 600 inhabitants voted almost unanimously to make Marie Co, a trans woman, the new mayor of their town. She ran on a platform of ecological sustainability and building the local economy, and once it understood that people did not elect her because she was or was not transgender, they elected a programme. She also points out how, when things become normal, you don't get singled out. And I think that's what equality is all about being defined by your actions, principles and personality, rather than the things you can't even control. Although it's far from perfect yet, we are seeing some countries adopt this mentality and become safer, more welcoming spaces for queer people. And this, in turn, is allowing more of us to come out and take ownership of our truths. In the UK, for example, the number of people who identify as lesbian, gay or bisexual has increased by more than a third in the past four years. At 2.2% of the country's population, this seemingly small number is at an all-time high. So I guess the UK must be doing something right if almost one and a half million people now identify as LGB. You know, there's something very powerful about watching groups of different people come together to show one another their support. And there's no better example of this than the All Black Lives Matter protest that happened in Los Angeles on the 14th of June. What was originally slated to be this year's LA Pride Parade had previously been cancelled due to COVID-19 before coming back in the form of a Black Lives Matter protest. As the organization's president, Esteban Monmayer, explained to the Los Angeles Times earlier in the month, In 1970, we gathered on Hollywood Boulevard to protest police brutality and oppression to our community. We will do that again this year, where it began, in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. 
He also stated that it is our moral imperative to honour the legacy of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, who bravely led the Stonewall Uprising by standing in solidarity with the black community against systemic racism and joining the fight for meaningful and long-lasting reform. In preparation for the event, Hollywood Boulevard was painted with the beautifully intersectional slogan, All Black Lives Matter, and its colours incorporated multiple pride flags. And then, of course, the protest itself followed. We saw thousands of LGBTQ plus people of all colours march down the same route in protest of police brutality again. The demonstration was fortunately very peaceful and according to the LA Times had no police involvement. It was a great reminder that LGBT rights and black rights really aren't so different from one another because we share a significant part of our history and continue to show each other solidarity. And that's why I'm posting this on the 28th of June. It's the 50th anniversary of the first Pride Parade to commemorate the Stonewall Riots. Since that day half a century ago, we've had a few more dates to remember, and in 2020 specifically, we've already honoured a few anniversaries. On the 24th of May, Taiwan celebrated their first full year of legalising same-sex marriage, and over in Ireland, they celebrated their fifth anniversary of the same thing just two days prior. So, you know, once again, things are changing, slowly. And on the topic of change, we need to talk about conversion therapy. For those of you who don't know, conversion therapy is the pseudoscientific practice of trying to change an individual's sexual orientation or gender from anything in our lovely rainbow to heterosexual or cisgender using psychological, spiritual, and even physical interventions. It's based heavily on the misconception that someone's gender identity or sexual preference is a choice, and has widely been proven to have no effects other than trauma on the patient involved. And I use quotation marks because of course, queer people don't need to be cured, they just want to love who they love and be who they are. But I did say I was here to talk about the good stuff. So while conversion therapy is still happening around the world, a lot of places are starting to recognise the detrimental effects of this practice. Back in January, Utah became the 19th US state to outlaw conversion therapy. Then in May, the Order of Albanian Psychologists came together to ban this discredited practice, making Albania the third country in Europe to do so. And now Canada is moving to criminalise this practice. So maybe we'll see some justice served soon? But when it comes to those who've already been put through this terrible ordeal, there's good news as well. The Australian Research Council have awarded a grant to researchers at La Trobe University who will use the money to investigate the best ways in which to help LGBT conversion therapy survivors. It might seem like baby steps, but we're getting there. But you know, these aren't the only places making strides. And I mean that quite literally. Because over in Shanghai, they had their 8th annual Pride Run on the 14th of June. More than 100 people took part in this particular event in order to raise public awareness for the LGBTQAI plus community, but the prize celebrations as a whole spanned nine days. That's pretty dang cool. Okay, we've dealt with a lot of real world topics, so I think it's time to discuss everyone's favourite pineapple dwelling porifera, Spongebob Squarepants. Unless you've been living under a rock, Hi Patrick, you will have heard that Nickelodeon has confirmed that Spongebob is part of the LGBTQAI plus community, but it is important to note that while a lot of fans just assumed Spongebob was gay, the show's creator Steven Hillenburg did once state in a 2005 interview that he always thought of Spongebob as asexual. This of course doesn't exclude him from romance, so who knows what Spongebob's future may hold. Seeing as we've already talked about one media personality, I think it's time we fully entered the world of cyberspace. I've been seeing a lot of LGBTQ plus films and series trending on the various streaming services, Netflix, Prime, whatever else. And this is very exciting to me because it would suggest that people are looking to educate themselves and consume more than just cishet narratives. So whether fiction or non-fiction is your thing, there are hundreds of series and films on the various streaming services that deal with LGBT stories, ranging from teen rom-coms to serious dramas. I'm not even going to try listing all my recommendations because there are so many out there and so many come out every day it seems, so I just encourage you to explore the vastness that is online, film, TV, me whatever. Just enjoy. 
However, if you want guaranteed light entertainment in a sort of reality package, you'll be happy to know Netflix released the latest season of Queer Eye earlier this month. For those of you who've never watched Queer Eye before, the program follows a lovable group of LGBTQ people known as the Fab Five as they transform the lives of selfless yet struggling strangers they like to call heroes. The group teaches their heroes how to cook, dress, groom themselves, and get out of whatever rut they found themselves in. Oh, and Bobby casually revamps their entire houses and workspaces too. The whole show is just a bundle of positivity, and this season might be the most wholesome yet. I cried many times. And, you know, it's a very needed source of joy right now. So yes, I strongly recommend watching it. And if you have already seen the season, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. Now, on this lovely note of wholesome stories, I want to wrap up this video by taking you to Cambridge in England, where two hens found love. Back in February, chicken owner Amanda Brunton took to Twitter to detail the story of how she discovered a pair of her female chickens had actually been courting for about a year. From delivering little gifts of food, to sleeping cuddled up next to each other, to doing happy little clucking dances together, this pair was the perfect couple basically from day one. But it took Amanda's breeder explaining the romantic nature of this behaviour for her to finally see what was happening. And the rest is history. But if you'd like to read up on the story in more detail, it will be linked down below with all the others. But as far as I'm involved, this is where I'll be ending today's little newscast. I hope it's been an uplifting bit of content, and that you feel a tiny bit happier than you did before the video began. And if you'd like to spread the positivity further, please feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more stuff like this. Goodbye!